Welcome back to Goss with Andy Man. Today I'm going to be installing this projector up there. Today I'm going to be installing a projector on the ceiling. I'm going to do this video a little bit differently from usual. What I normally do is massively edit stuff and speed bits up and everything just so you don't go insane. On this one it's going to be more or less completely unedited so you're going to see all of the bloopers, all of the mistakes that I make. You're gonna see the job from beginning to end, more or less, other than for when I have to move the camera, because I'll probably have to move the camera quite a bit, but you're gonna see more or less the whole job with no edits, no speeding up of footage or anything, just so you can get a proper idea of how long a job like this will take. I think I'll get this done in about 15 minutes, I think, but um, we shall see. I'll take you quickly through what I need for the job first. And to be honest, a lot of the time has already been spent in preparation, kind of working out distances and all that sort of thing. So I'll take you through what I've got for the job and, um, and then you can watch us do it and see how long it actually takes. Right, so obviously I've got the actual projector here, which is a BenQ 1070, which is a fairly okay, middle of the road kind of projector. We've got the ceiling mount here, which is in two parts, the bit that actually goes on the ceiling and the bit that goes on the projector. This ceiling mount cost about 10 quid. I'm not a one for spending fortunes on stuff. I know you can get ceiling mounts that are much, much more expensive than that for many hundreds of pounds. At the end of the day, it's a bit of metal. This projector, we'll, we'll cover this in a minute, but this projector I know weighs about three kilos or thereabouts. This ceiling mount, it's, it's made of steel. It's not aluminium, it's, uh, it's steel. That ain't gonna have any problems holding three kilos. No problems at all. As I say, that mount was about 10 quid. I have here a 12 and a half meter HDMI cable. Again, you will be advised that you need to spend many hundreds of pounds on an HDMI cable. No, you don't. This was 10 quid. If it doesn't work, I will honestly let you know, but I can guarantee you it'll be absolutely fine. You do have to be a little bit careful on cheaper cables. Sometimes the ends aren't as robust as um, the more expensive cables, but at the end of the day, once it's run through the wall and plugged in, you're never going to be touching it again. So as long as you test it, once you've got it all connected up, this will be absolutely fine. At the end of the day, it's a digital signal that's going through. It's not an analog signal. It either works or it doesn't work. And for the sake of 10 quid on a cable, I'll take the chances. I've then got uh, an HDMI splitter. This literally just has one in and two out because I need to get uh, basically I need to get the signal from the telly to the projector what I'm actually doing is I'm taking the feed out the back of the amp which goes into the input here and it splits it into two outputs this is an active unit in other words it's powered so you get a little power unit to go with it that's fine because it's going to go behind the amp where it'll plug in and then this big long cable will plug into that and go to the projector that's just a power cable for the projector. I may or may not use that, or I may make a custom one. And most importantly, we've got the instruction manual here. Now, I'm just gonna quickly run you through the key things that you're gonna have to work out before you start this project. But the manual of the projector here has a table of what's known as the throw distance for the projector. This is really the most important thing in setting all of this up. Right, hopefully you can read this. So, because I'm in the UK, which has a crazy kind of metric imperial crossover, uh, the size of the screen is, is measured in inches, and then we're gonna measure the distance from the screen to the projector in uh, millimeters. What are you gonna do? So, I've got a 90 inch screen, which is here. So I'm looking down here to check the minimum and maximum distance I can have the projector from the screen. Now I've already kind of worked this out because you need to base your screen and your projector purchase so that they'll obviously match up for the size of your room because otherwise you could end up with either too big or too small picture for your screen. So I already know that I'm in the ballpark for this. 
Right, so I've got a 90 inch screen, and remember we're, we're measuring it on the diagonal of the screen. So we're gonna follow this line across, and we're looking at the minimum projection distance and the maximum projection distance. Minimum is 2,278 millimeters, which is, we'll round it up to 2.3 meters, and the maximum is 2,962 millimeters, which I'll round down to 2.9. So we're looking between 2.3 and 2.9 meters and we've also got a lowest projection height as well this is more for if you've got the projector higher than the screen and I don't have the projector higher than the screen so I don't need to worry about that figure at the end the, the only things that I need to really think about are the minimum and maximum distance so I've put a mark on the ceiling of those two points and as long as I install the projector somewhere in between those two, it'll be fine. The other thing that I've already done and marked in advance is the center point to the screen on the opposite wall. So I know that the center of the lens is pretty much on the center of the screen, pointing to the center of the screen. So I've already marked all of that out and now I'm ready to start the install. So you're gonna see the job from that point onwards without any editing. I just want to show you as well quickly the weight of this projector just to sanity check. So we've got about 2.8 kilos for the projector itself and then I'll also take into account the weight of the bracket. So the bit that goes on the ceiling is about 0.3 of a kilo, say 0.4 to round it up. So we're looking at uh, 3.2 kilos so far. And then the bit that goes on the projector itself, about another 200 grams. So we're looking at about 3.4 kilos. Now, a lot of people are gonna panic thinking, oh, this is quite heavy and putting it onto a plasterboard ceiling, is this gonna be okay? Well, I'm gonna use these fittings. And I know from looking in the specs for these fittings, that they'll hold about 15 kilos each. So I know from these four fittings, I can handle about 60 kilos of weight on the ceiling. Now, don't get us wrong, I wouldn't trust putting 60 kilos of weight on a small surface area of ceiling like that. The likelihood is that section of ceiling would just come down. But three and a half, the point is, three and a half kilos will be absolutely fine. If it's not and it comes down, I shall let you know. Right, I'm gonna crack on with the job. Let's see how we get on. Hopefully I'll not hit any pipes or anything, but if I do, you're gonna see literally every part of this job. Uncut footage. Right, so as I was saying before, here's the centre mark. So that mark here going down the wall marks where the centre of the, of the screen is. So I've got a big square here which I'm going to use to just bring that mark out a bit. Um, only using very faint lines here. And remember, that's not necessarily the centre of the bracket, that's the centre of the lens. Um, but we'll work that out in a minute. We've then got, and I've marked my maximum distance here, maximum throw distance is a little mark here, and the minimum is a little mark all the way up here. So the lens, the front of the lens can be anything between that and that. So I don't want it too far forward because I don't want it like right in the middle of the room. Um, but at the same time, I don't want it too close to the absolute limit. So I'm gonna just bring it in a, a little bit, just to give us a little bit of leeway, and that's what this little mark of tape is. So this is gonna be um, the front of the lens, where this bit of tape is. So that's what we're aiming for. Right, so I've obviously, I've already unboxed the bracket and everything, and these brackets, um, these cheapy brackets, they normally come with four arms on them, and you can adjust these arms to fit any kind of uh, projector or more or less any kind of projector. Um, this projector only has three screw holes on it, which is fairly common. And so all I've done is I've kind of 
loosen these little bolts and these bolts here um, with the allen key that you get with it and I've put them in the right place so that I can get the uh, bracket more or less in the middle of the projector so I don't want it so that this because the way this works you see um, once that's on there it just hooks onto this bit of the bracket like that and then you can alter the angles and stuff to like true it up afterwards which is great um, but you want it so that it's hanging more or less you don't want it like off the center of gravity if that makes sense so I've tried to kind of maneuver every, everything to get this bit as close to the center of the projector as possible not the center of the lens the center of the projector because what I'd, otherwise it'll be inclined to like try and lean to one side which we don't want so all we then do is are these yeah okay all we then do is just screw these in you get the screws with the bracket um, most projectors uh, are fairly standard with the screw sizes but not all of them are um, right this is a slightly awkward one because it's underneath that bit so I'm just gonna have to feed the screw in like that Go. And then I'm just going to tighten these up. You don't have to be crazy tight, you know, they're only going into, I think, the brass fittings on the other end. So, you know, brass is quite soft. You don't want to, you don't want to thread it. You want it tight enough so it's not going to come loose of its own accord. There we go. That's fine. And then, as I say, this is going to go on like that. And you can see that's hanging pretty well. You know, there's my fingers more or less in the middle of the bracket. And it's not inclined to um, point up or down. That's hanging all of its own accord fairly level. And remember, we can afterwards we can tighten all this stuff up to, um, to level it up properly. So, what I now need to do is get this lens in the middle of that line and work out where the bracket needs to go, work out where these holes need to go. Okay, so all I've done, I've marked where that screw hole's going. And that's enough to kind of work everything else out from there. I've got, um, remember what I'm doing, I'm lining up the middle of the lens with this mark that I've got here. I just want to double check on the end of the lens. I've actually probably got a little bit on the far back. I'll probably bring it forward a little bit. Bring it forward a bit. And go for that. Right. The re once I've done that, I can do the rest without the projector attached to it. You see, so it's not easy holding that up at that angle and marking everything. So okay, so we're going for about there. So we've got the front screw hole marked. Now all I'm doing is making sure the edge of that. Bracket is in line with, uh, is parallel to that line there. So, and now I can mark everything up. So, I've got one there, one there. Let's just.
Right, there's the holes. I am going to use a detector, but to be honest, there's not a lot of point because I haven't got much option but to go there. So even if there is something there, I'm going to have to work out some sort of way around it. Let's just have a quick check now. Okay, we, we seem clear. It sounds like we're hollow all the way around there, which is fine. Right. So, first thing I'm going to do, watch your eyes for the dust. I'm going to do four smaller holes with a masonry bit. Let me just do that. Right. The reason I've done that is so I can have a little feel for what's up there. So you can either use a screwdriver or I can feel pretty well with a drill whether or not that's hitting anything and it's not masonry bits are generally nice and blunt so if there is a pipe or a cable it's hopefully not going to go through it I'm pretty confident that we're fine there I can feel that's clear right and then I'm going to go once I'm happy that that's uh, clear I'm going in with my slightly bigger hole that I need for the fitness that I'm using. There we go. I know we, someone's probably going to ask why aren't I... See this is an 8mm masonry bit. Um, and I like to have quite a tight fitting on the um, on these type of uh, plugs. So all I do is I go in with an eight and then just move the drill around a bit to get a slightly bigger hole. If I go in with a ten, I find it's too loose, uh, and I haven't got a nine, I don't think. So get the fittings. Whoops. And with these sort of fittings, to use the uh, setting tool, you need to just wind the screw back a little bit before you pop them in. And then push them up. That's just a perfect fit. I need the setting tool to set them in and take this bit of tape down now and I can also wipe all the marks off the ceiling as well because I don't need them anymore hopefully These setting tools, by the way, you can get a cheap one and it'll last you for about 10 holes before it breaks. Or you can get a decent one. This is a decent one, it cost about 50 quid, I think. Um, and it ain't gonna break. I've used it for thousands of holes. Right. Just clean these marks off. Don't need these anymore. I'm going to leave a little bit of this one um, just for when I'm putting the actual projector up. I can use it as a, a reference. Mm. 
is... Where's my screwdriver gone? Can't find my screw... Oh, there it is. Oh! Right, I don't think this has a front or back. I think it can go either way. So... Take those out. Right. I'm going to need some slightly bigger washers on these screws so they don't go through the holes. I've got some washers here. And I'm just going to get one in to start with, just to take the weight, and then I'll do the rest. Worth saying with these um, fittings, which are really, really good for heavier stuff on uh, plasterboard or drywall, um, just be careful that you don't cross thread them when you're putting them in. So if you do, you knacker the fitting and you have to take the whole thing. Well, you basically you've got an unpleasant day if you break the fitting. That's not tight. All I'm doing is taking up the slack. So, okay, I wish I hadn't rubbed that mark away now because now I don't have a reference anymore for whether or not the back is bracket straight. So, there's first balls up. So all I'm trying to do is just, because there's plenty adjustment in these brackets, I'm just wanting them, um, wanting the whole thing parallel to that line. I've made these two tight. That's good. And tighten them up now. Again, don't over tighten them. You want them tight but uh, tight so they're not going to fall out but not too tight again you can damage the fitting if you over tighten it that's it right so now I can get rid of them pencil marks. <laughs> Just being careful not to rub all the paint off the ceiling. That should be all right. Right. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to switch over to um, hex bit on my screwdriver because it's easier now I can't find I mean obviously we'll want this level that way which I think we just do with a little screw in the front here um, not sure. Let's see if this one fits yeah that's good pop a washer on it It's literally just going to level it left to right. So I've got a little spirit level here. I'm just going to pop on a bit of the projector I'm assuming is flat and level, which it looks to me. I'm only doing it roughly at the minute because this might change when I tighten the side 
bolts. Right, but that's level. Now, I can't find anything in the instructions that says whether or not it has to be level that way. So, I think what I'll do, I'll just set it, I'll set it level, but then I might have to adjust it afterwards. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with it. in the back. You get millions of screws with this bracket, so there's no shortage of screws. should have tightened those screws before putting all this up. Uh, right, okay. So basically, <laughs> it's all fine, but uh, I didn't realize that these screws under here uh, aren't tight. So I'm gonna have to just take out, it's just the front and back screw that I need to take out, I think. Don't. screwdriver that will fit up that gap otherwise I'm going to have to take all this off which I don't really want to do. nice and tight now while I'm at it actually. Let's just check all of these are tight. Yeah. Yeah. That's better. Pop these screws back in.
that's more or less it. So all I would say, you know, this bracket, as I say, it cost 10 quid. And the HDMI cable cost 10 quid and the HDMI splitter, I think, cost about 10 quid as well. So it's cost a 30 quid in materials to do this job. Um, plenty of people would advise you to spend maybe 150 quid on a bracket and another 150 quid on a cable um, and another 100 quid on a splitter. Spend that money on a better projector. That's all I would say. Put all your money into getting the best projector you can um, and don't waste it on crazily expensive brackets and cables. You know, maybe you might buy a cheap bracket and it doesn't do the job and you're 10 quid worse off. This bracket um, is absolutely fine. Um, I don't think we'll have any problems with that whatsoever. And the most fun bit of the whole job, obviously, we've got another little one on the remote sensor. Um, take the lens cap off. I'll just leave that up there for now. I might actually know. Um, I think that'll be alright. Shall I take you through setting it up? Might do that. Right, let's uh, connect it all up and show you what's involved here. So, I've got my HDMI splitter and uh, it's a bit dark in this corner, but it's just behind where the amp is. A bit dusty. Um, as I say, the splitter needs power. So there's my little power thing for the splitter. Uh, there's the splitter itself. I'm not going to plug it in until I've wired it up. Um, but basically, um, oh, let me just... Let me turn the amp off. So. Uh, yeah, that's the out. So basically this this HDMI currently goes into the telly. And we still want that to go into the telly. So that's going to go into output one on there. And then I need a short HDMI cable, which I've got one somewhere. This is going from the back of me amp. So the output, or it could be the back of your PlayStation or whatever you're feeding your projector with. So this little short cable is coming from the output to your input on your splitter. Hmm. Might be getting power of the HDMI, maybe it doesn't need the power thing. We shall find out. Seems to be getting power with no power plugged in. We shall see if it works. And now we've got the big HDMI cable and uh, I'm just gonna temporarily plug that in. As I say, <laughs> it is a cheap cable. I'm not gonna be, I don't want it getting tangled or twisted or um, anything that's likely to to break it. So I've got one end going into the uh, splitter. And this is coming out of output two on the splitter to feed the projector. And then the other end will go into the projector. So let me move the camera. I'm only temporarily hooking everything up just to kind of prove everything works. Um, this video won't be showing tidying the cables up and running cable through walls. What I would suggest you do is you pay your local Sparky to come along and pop a socket behind the projector and a socket behind your projector screen. That will make life infinitely easier. And if you ask him nicely, I'm sure he'll run an HDMI cable up the wall for you at the same time. I can't see anything on the back of this. Uh, <laughs> HDMI one is over on this side. Is it? Yeah. 
and then, and as I say, at the minute I'm just temporarily hooking the power up just to check everything works. We have a power light. Right, let's fire it up. As I say, I've never used this before. I have no idea how to use it. I don't know what any of this does. Lens shift. Assuming that's some sort of zoom, and we've got some sort of focus thing. Let it get warmed up, do its do. Where's my coffee? So yeah, so uh, just to briefly talk about the cables. I've already checked and I've got a nice route down this wall that I can take the cables through. Um, Every wall is different. There's no point really including anything in this video about how to route the cables because that in itself, in some cases, can be a really big job. In this case, it's really easy because I can just fish them through the wall. Um, but as I say, get your Sparky to put a socket like here um, so that you can just neatly plug it in straight behind the projector and then have another, like an HDMI outlet or something like that, or a brush plate that you can run the HDMI cable through and jobs are good. Right, I need to uh, turn the camera around so you can see the screen. I haven't got long because the uh, memory card of my camera is nearly full. But the first thing that we need to do, get some sort of menu up. I'm just gonna focus it. At the minute, um, I'm not gonna bother playing with the zoom. I just wanna get the focus about right. And then, once the focus is right, oh, come back. I can get actually get the camera focused on the screen because at the minute I have no idea whether or not the camera is in focus. So let me just check that. I'll have to pause the camera. Right, the camera is pretty well focused on the screen now. So uh, let's try and set this up. As I say, I've never used this projector before, so. Uh, First thing we need to do, we need to turn the image upside down. Um, so, color temperature, oops. <laughs> what am I missing? Let's get the test pattern up. Okay. Well, that's a start, but there's no point in doing that without um, turning the picture around. Come on. Normally it's a really obvious option somewhere to flip it. Projector position, do you think that's it? Front. Ah, front ceiling. <laughs> there we go, that's better. So now I'm just gonna adjust the zoom and whatnot to get that in the right place. So you can see what I'm going to have to do is just alter the position of the projector very slightly. So I'm going to have to fiddle with some of the screws at the top just to get this. I might have to just push it round. That looks better. That looks good. I hope you can see this. And then we need it pointing up a teeny bit. Uh, so, let's see if we can get a signal into it. So we've got the PlayStation on, we've got the amp on PlayStation. Theoretically, if I just put this on HDMI, in fact, let's just check whether or not the um, splitter is working at all. So all I'm going to do is bring the screen up and switch the telly on and check if the telly's getting a signal before I even start thinking about the projector. Stop, that'll do. Because if the telly's not getting a signal, then um, I'm fighting a losing battle.
And if it's not getting a signal, then it might be because the splitter need, it does need power. It, okay, that's doing bugger all. Let's plug this power thing into the splitter and see if that fixes it. There we go. Right, okay, that's better. So, with that in mind, we should be able to get the same signal to the um, to the projector just by pressing that button. Oh yes, that's kind of weird. Right, so switch the telly off. Bring the screen down. And switch the lights off. I'm not sure what this will look like through the camera. It might look a bit odd. Yeah, I'm just checking the camera, and it's just because of the probably because of the frame rate of the projector. We're getting some sort of weird. Um, interference pattern. I can assure you it doesn't look like that in real life. Um, let me just get the controller. What are you doing? Oh there you go, cool. Yeah there's just some sort of weird, I'm not sure if that will come out on the recording or not, but there's just some sort of weird frame rate um, mismatch between the projector and the camera, so the interference that you're seeing on the screen isn't there in real life. So it, it looks pretty much perfect to me. So jobs are good. So I hope you found that vaguely useful. The whole project, excluding the price of the projector, because you can spend as much as you want on a projector, the whole project has cost me probably about 120 quid, including the cost of the motorized screen. The, the motorized screen was about 80 quid. Um, HDMI, 12 and a half meter HDMI cable was about a tenner. The uh, ceiling mount for the projector was about a tenner. And the HDMI splitter was about a tenner. Uh, and then other bits and pieces and, and whatnot that I've bought as well, delivery charges and stuff. So no more than 120. And uh, it's working absolutely spot on so i hope you found that useful don't forget to subscribe um, many other videos coming your way hit the like button any questions pop them in the comments or um, if you've put a projector up and um, you've done it in a different way or whatever pop it in the comments and uh, thanks for watching see you next time